What the heck is pernicious anemia? If you don't know, then you came to the right place. I'm gonna make this as quick and painless as possible. Before we start, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. Thank you for being here. Uh, this channel is a little bit about everything. I am a nurse, so I do primarily teach nursing topics, but I do cover a variety of topics to keep it interesting. Let's go. get started for those that have a keen eye and maybe you see something on me this is cupping I am NOT getting beat <laughs> this is not a hickey pernicious anemia what is anemia anemia is essentially a deficiency in the number of red blood cells the quantity or quality of hemoglobin and hematocrit so when you're looking at a patient's lab work a lot of times what initially you will focus on is what's their H and H their hemoglobin and hematocrit when they're anemic, this leads to reduced oxygen flow to the body's organs. We need oxygen in our tissues, as you're all aware. There are also different types of anemias. There's megaloblastic anemia, which causes impaired DNA synthesis, and this leads to large RBCs. So mega is large, right? Think large, large, large red cell, okay? Uh, macrocytic RBCs are easily destroyed and have fragile membranes. There's also microcytic anemia, think small, I'm a tiny red blood cell. But we're not going to be talking about this today because we are discussing pernicious anemia. Etiology, what causes it? Well, it's an absence of intrinsic factor. And again, this is for pernicious anemia because you can have, and pernicious anemia has to do with B12. What causes it? It's an absence of intrinsic factor. Intrinsic factor, which is going to be abbreviated as IF, it's a protein that is secreted by the parietal cells of the gastric mucosa. So intrinsic factor is required for the absorption of B12. If you see this word, it's the same thing as B12, just FYI, in case you get thrown off on an exam. Lack of intrinsic factor is caused by either gastric mucosal atrophy, so as people age, maybe their intrinsic factor, their, their gastric mucosa, it starts to atrophy. This can also happen with celiac disease. Um, where the little villi just start dying off and they were like this long before and they keep getting chopped off. Or it can be due to autoimmune destruction of the parietal cells. Mo usually it has an insidious onset and it begins in middle age or later on and the textbook essentially said around the 40s and later on. So what are, what are the clinical manifestations of pernicious anemia? They're going to get a sore red beefy and shiny tongue, so a large red tongue. They may have anorexia, nausea, vomiting, and abdominal pain. What you need to focus on though for your exam, definitely this red beefy shiny tongue, that's frequently tested on, but also B12 deficiency and not the other ones are associated with neurological and neuromuscular manifestations. So what you're going to see on an exam if it's B12 deficiency, aka pernicious anemia, is going to be the paresthesias. Oh, a patient says he has tingling, um, he can't feel his fingers, or he has sharp shooting pains. So paresthesia of the feet and hands, ataxia is basically not coordinated, muscle weakness, impaired thought process such as confusion but again if you see paresthesias or I have tingling in my hands or things like that it is B12 for exam purposes in real life can it be other things yes uh, for example type 2 diabetes can cause the the tingling also because they get neuropathy pain they can get this the tingling and the sharp shooting pain what are complications of pernicious anemia well without treatment patients may develop heart failure and die what are the diagnostics for megaloblastic anemia? So the RBCs are going to be large. Remember I said that before, they're large and they have abnormal shapes. Serum folate needs to be obtained because with pernicious anemia, AKA B12 deficiency or folate deficiency, and those two circumstances is when the cells are large. So we need to figure out, is this anemia related to iron? Is it related to B12? Is it related to folate? If it's large, it's going to be B12 or folate. You've narrowed it down to 50-50 on an exam. 
Now, ideally what they should be doing to distinguish is serum anti-IF antibodies. That's serum anti-intrinsic factor antibodies. And this test is specific for pernicious anemia. Incre they have an increased risk of gastric cancer and pernicious anemia, and an upper GI endoscopy and biopsy may be done. Um, this was in the textbook, but they're, they're normally not going to test you on this. They may test you on knowing about the serum anti-IF antibodies. So if they have anti-intrinsic factor antibodies, think in your brain. Okay, intrinsic factor, that's associated with B12. It's going to be B12, aka pernicious anemia. So I thought of this myself. I'm proud of myself for that. So look at this red blood cell. This is a normal red blood cell, and this is a red blood cell that is deficient in B12 or folate. And think of BF, right? Big and fat. So the red blood cell is big and fat. So that's an easy little acronym to remember what the RBC looks like. Big and fat, BF, B12, folate, right? They go together. So B12 and folate, think BF, big and fat. This is what the red blood cell and pernicious anemia will look like. It's going to be large, and this is a normal RBC. Yes, of course, RBCs have the concave disc and all of that, but guys, I'm not a graphic designer or a web artist. Like, I can't make all that, so this is the best I could do. Treatment for pernicious anemia. If the patient doesn't absorb, right, because they don't have the thing in their stomach to absorb B12, what route do you... You could give them B12, 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 it's not going to work. Now, recently, new studies are showing that high doses of B12, sometimes they do absorb it, but for test purposes, patient does not absorb B12, so oral will not work. So they're gonna get IM cobalamin, that's B12, IM B12, 1,000 micrograms per day for two weeks, then weekly, then monthly for life. On an exam though, are they gonna get this specific Usually not. What you will see on an exam is usually like, oh, this patient has pernicious anemia, what is the patient education? And you have to tell them that they will need injections for life. Or which example by, which statement by the patient states that the patient needs further teaching, right? They don't get what you just said. And it's if the patient says something along the lines of like, oh, I'm so glad my B12 is replaced and I never have to have these injections anymore. He needs further teaching because he needs injections for life. Other forms which are normally not tested on are the intranasal and parenteral, which are IV. Usually on an exam, again, how they're replacing it. And also in real life, like unless you're severely uh, deficient, they're not going to sit there and give you IM with IV when they can give you IM B12. Well, other causes of B12 deficiency. If this person had GI surgery, gastric bypass, so you absorb your B12 in a specific area, and if that area is taken out, then you're not going to be able to absorb B12. Just to clarify, although I don't think that they're going to test you on this, so the stomach is the one that produces intrinsic factor, but where B12 is actually absorbed is usually in the small intestine, so the ileum. So in gastric bypass, if they're taking out that part of your intestine, then you aren't going to absorb it, right? It's like if you're trying to put gas in your car, but you take out the hosing, that the gas isn't gonna go into the car at all. Um, also reasons for uh, B12 deficiency, so the textbook, I found this surprising. I had never heard of this, so don't worry so much for your exam. But um, hot tea, they said. I'm not sure, and they didn't even mention like a specific type of tea, they just said hot tea. Um, excessive alcohol intake will not only cause B12 deficiency, but also folate deficiency. Smoking also, remember that smoking affects everything. It's also associated with increased autoimmune conditions. So if you smoke, please stop. Uh, Long-term use of PPIs or H2 antagonists, that just messes up with the hydrochloric acid and you need hydrochloric acid in order to produce the intrinsic factor. Um, and strict vegetarians or vegans, so I myself am a vegan, I've been a vegan for 13 years and I do take B12 supplements. I have never been deficient in B12 and I have not been anemic, but that's something to educate your patients on. That's all folks, so hopefully now you're experts and you understand what pernicious anemia is and what causes it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you learned a lot today. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button and make sure you keep coming back for more videos.